How is genetic information expressed? Bio 111L, Laboratory 8. DNA carries all of the instructions needed for growth, development, function, and cellular reproduction. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA is double-stranded and forms a helix. You can think of the DNA double helix as a twisted ladder. The sides of the ladder are called the rails, and the rails of the DNA double helix is called the DNA backbone. The steps of the ladder are called the rungs. The rungs of the DNA double helix are called the base pairs. The base pairs are made up of one complementary base from each DNA strand. The backbone of DNA is the same in all living organisms. The DNA molecule has a backbone composed of alternating sugar and phosphate molecules. You are so sweet because you're made of sugar. The basis of DNA is where we get genetic variation. This gives us our genetic sequence or genetic code. These bases are nitrogenous bases. DNA molecules are made up of a string of nucleotides held together by phosphodiester bonds. DNA nucleotides contain a sugar molecule. The type of sugar molecule they contain is a deoxyribose sugar molecule. This is why DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. The DNA nucleotides contain one of four possible nitrogenous bases. The nitrogenous base can either be adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine. RNA nucleotides also contain a sugar molecule. Its sugar molecule is a ribose sugar molecule, which is why RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. RNA nucleotides contain one of these four possible nitrogenous bases. It can be adenine, guanine, cytosine, or uracil. So if we compare the structure of the DNA nucleotides versus RNA nucleotides side by side, we see that the difference besides the sugar molecule is the nitrogenous bases. In DNA, we can have the option of having thymine as a nitrogenous base. In RNA, thymine is replaced with uracil. The base pairs are held together with hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are relatively weak. It is important for the hydrogen bonds to be able to be broken when the cell needs to access the individual DNA strands. For example, the two DNA strands need to be separated for DNA replication during reproduction and to make the mRNA template during transcription. Base pairing in DNA. DNA is double-stranded. Each strand of DNA is connected to the other DNA strand through hydrogen bonding as shown. This hydrogen bond occurs between the nitrogenous bases on opposing DNA strands. Adenine can only pair with thymine, and when it pairs, it creates two hydrogen bonds. Cytosine can only pair with guanine. When it pairs, it creates three hydrogen bonds. Adenine and thymine are considered complementary. Cytosine and guanine are also considered complementary because they go with one another. 
the internal portion of the DNA double helix is made up of complementary base pairs. When we discuss the amount of genetic material contained in a gene, a chromosome, or an organism, we quantify the amount of DNA in terms of the base pairs. For example, the Human Genome Project revealed that the human genome, which is all of the genetic material in a human cell, is an impressive 30 billion base pairs. Base pairs are grouped together into regions called genes. Genes are discrete segments of DNA located together on a chromosome that holds the instructions for a specific function or trait. The Human Genome Project identified 30,000 genes. How is the genetic code read? The information encoded in DNA is expressed as proteins. Gene expression is done in a two-step process. Step one is transcription. Transcription involves making mRNA, or messenger RNA, using DNA as a template. Step two is translation. Translation then translates the mRNA sequence into an amino acid sequence, which forms a protein. DNA is not able to leave the nucleus of the cell, so the process of transcription takes place in the nucleus of the cell. The process of translation takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell. The first step in the process of gene expression is called transcription. Transcription involves using the DNA strand as a template to form messenger RNA or mRNA. The double-stranded DNA molecule unzips to allow access to its nitrogenous bases. Remember that DNA strands are complementary to each other. Can you fill in the boxes with the correct complementary bases? Here is your hint. In DNA, A pairs with T and C pairs with G. You can pause the video if you want to give it a try. So let's see what the answer would be. So how did you do? When mRNA is transcribed, it is done in a similar way. The DNA is used as a template and RNA nucleotides will be added on to the growing RNA molecule according to the rules of complementary base pairing. So we can add on the complementary base pairs just like we did for the complementary strand of DNA, except for one difference. RNA uses uracil instead of thymine. So here's our RNA base pairing rules. In RNA, A pairs with U, and C pairs with G. Pause the video if you want to give it a try. See if you can fill in the boxes. Now that we have our mRNA molecule, we can go to the second and final step of gene expression, which is translation. The mRNA molecule leaves the nucleus and goes to the cytoplasm. It finds a ribosome and attaches to it. The ribosome is the site of protein synthesis. The mRNA docks onto the ribosome. The base pair sequence of the mRNA 
will be translated three base pairs at a time. This is called a codon. The code on the mRNA is translated as codons, which are triplets of bases. These codons code for specific amino acids in the body. Transfer RNA, or tRNA, reads the codon, then retrieves the appropriate amino acid and attaches it to the growing amino acid chain. So we went from DNA, using DNA as a template, we made mRNA, or messenger RNA. Then messenger RNA leaves the nucleus and goes to the cytoplasm, where it finds a ribosome and docks to the ribosome. Once on the ribosome, transfer RNA will come and read the code on the mRNA. It will read it as a triplet code called a codon. The transfer RNA will take that codon information and will add on the appropriate amino acid according to the sequence. As amino acids are added on, the protein is formed. Here is a table from Wikipedia showing the genetic code. So different codons are going to code for different amino acids. You will see that there is some redundancy in the code, which is actually a good thing because mutations do occur. And when mutations occur, sometimes there will not be any difference in the outcome of the protein product, which means there will be no difference for the organism having that mutation. The exercises you will be doing this week will include an exercise called cooking up a protein. In this exercise, you will simulate transcription and translation with the final protein product being a mixed drink. You will add each ingredient to your mixed drink according to the simulated codons of your simulated genetic code. You will also do a DNA fingerprinting activity. You will be creating your own DNA molecule cutting it up, and then comparing your unique restriction fragments with your classmates. This is a simulation of a technique used to identify who the DNA found at the scene of a crime belongs to. This technique is restriction fragment length polymorphism analysis. Thank you for watching.